everyone, Mark Michelle here at Lone University. Welcome to lesson number 12. This is Introduction to Double Thump Technique, Part 1. Double Thump Technique, um, well the name Double Thump is basically the most common way I see it referred to, but there's a lot of different names for this technique. It's known as the Victor Wooten Technique, the Down Up Pluck Pluck Technique, the Double Thumb, uh, however you want to think of it. But Double Thump is basically the act of kind of uh, evolving from slap bass to more of a hybrid between finger style and slap bass almost and it kind of uses the thumb as a guitar pick going up and down kind of like an alternate picking and adding a pluck pluck uh, to finish out as a four note sequence and what it does is it really allows you to kind of have a really funky staccato slap bass sound in more of a, a really speedy finger style kind of an example of the technique uh, when used in conjunction with all four attack notes, sounds like this. You get the idea. So, in this part one video, we're going to talk about just the thumb, and in part two, we're going to talk about the pluck pluck. So, with four total notes, we're going to break the first two notes as the two thumbs, down, up, and part two, we're going to talk about pluck pluck. Now, this is a very advanced technique, and it's it's uh, another one of those techniques that's kind of like the holy grail of bass playing that everyone really aspires to do. And uh, you know, just a year ago, I wasn't even able to do this. I I always picked the bass up and tried it, and I was just like, man, this is just so hard. It's just so weird. I just can't get it. And you know, I watched all these videos and just really studied how people did it, and I just could never understand how they got the control to do it. And one day it clicked with me that, you know, the, the technique is looked at and played very aggressively. It's kind of a staccato, it's really aggressive, you know. Right? And that's how it should sound. It's supposed to be kind of a slap bass sound. But the thing I realized is that you can't play it really hard like that right at first. Because as you increase the intensity of the technique, the control diminishes. And think of it like you know, starting to learn to pitch baseball. You can't draw, you can't paint an X on a wall and go back 50 yards or something and throw a baseball as hard as you possibly can and expect to hit that. But you can go real lightly and just kind of toss it and be accurate, right? So the point I'm making here is that you have to start off really light and get the motions first. And once you get comfortable with that and that control, you can speed that up. So for this first part one and part two video, we're not even going to worry about making it sound funky or sound how you kind of want it to sound, more of aggressive, uh, really attack-based technique. So if you've ever thumbed around on your bass and kind of uh, not played fingerstyle and kind of played notes just more like... You know what, that's exactly the way it should feel right off the bat. It's, it's the same thing as just plucking through a string with fingerstyle but with your thumb. So if fingerstyle you were to play a string like this, plucking through the string and landing on the string behind it. Double thumb is basically going the other way. I'm plucking through a string and landing on the string in front of it. And the whole premise of this technique is to stay really close to the bass. You'll notice when I play this, my hand's not flying off the bass. It's staying real compact. So it, it's all about economy of motion, not wasting movement. So what I'm going to have you do to really build that habit right off the bat of staying compact, I'm going to have you just grab this top G string with these two fingers. These are the two fingers you're going to be using to pluck in part two, and they need to be close to the bass. You can't do down, up, and come way away from the bass. I mean, your fingers are way up here. They need to be down here ready to go. So go ahead and grab onto this top G string with your two fingers, and for this whole video, I want you to leave them there. That's going to force your hand to stay close by on the bass. So with that being said, I want you to just kind of thumb around on random notes. We're not going to give some complicated exercise once again. This is all about this hand for now. The major scale is always important. I, I can give that major scale exercise for every video because it's important to drill that. Like I said, it's one of the building blocks of music. So let's just take a B major scale starting on fret 7 on the E string. I just want you to go back and forth on this first note. So you're going to go through the note like you're plucking it. Let's just do the downstroke first. Don't worry about 
making it sound like slap bass or how you want it. You just, just a pluck. And just focus on plucking the string and landing on the string below it, which is this A string. Really light. Okay? Now the second stroke here is the upstroke. And arguably, in my opinion, when I learned this technique, that was the hardest part to get down because, you know, plucking through a string with your thumb is something you're pretty accustomed to doing. Plucking finger style is pretty similar to the two plucks. But coming back up with the thumb to pluck a string may not be something you're used to doing. So that's probably the most foreign aspect of this technique. Okay, so practice landing on this A string and then coming back up. Okay, just gently. Don't worry about doing it hard. We're not worried about that yet. Okay. And already on my fingernail, it's starting to really uh, tear up my fingernail, and that, that's to be expected. This is a brutal technique on your hands, and you're going to beat the crap out of your thumb doing this, but just like starting bass with finger style, you're going to beat the crap out of your fingertips. So no pain, no gain, right? So I'm basically just kind of coming up, and it's kind of right in the center of my thumbnail. You can kind of see where uh, on my fingernail it's starting to get a little chafed looking. So that's about the spot where I'm doing this. So just focus going down, up, down, up, really slow, really gentle, with the index and the middle fingers still grabbing the G string. And this, what this is also doing is it's forcing you to make most of the movement from your thumb joint. And you'll realize later, once the technique gets going, there's a little bit of wrist involved. But you're not, it's not an arm motion and grabbing these strings in this manner really prevents your arm from getting involved. It's supposed to be very relaxed, okay? So down, up, and once you get comfortable with that, try moving around maybe two or three notes on just the bottom string. Okay, and a good way to think about the upstroke too is think of the string you're landing on. It's kind of like a little trampoline or a little springboard. So always focus on going through the string with the downstroke and kind of feeling yourself land on that next string and kind of bounce back uh, like a recoil for the upstroke. Just kind of bouncing off that one. And what you also want to focus on is making both of those notes sound even in tone. So don't look down at the bass, just look away or close your eyes. You just want to listen. Do both notes sound equal in tone? Is one louder than the other? Is one a little more abrasive than the other? Is one too quiet? And you just want to focus on adjusting your technique to where they sound even. Na, da, da, da. You don't want mm, ga, mm, ga, something like that because at the end you wanted all four notes to sound very even, even though each thumb or each finger attacking the string is very different uh, tonally. Okay? Once you get that, you want to work to move that around another string. So I'm just going up and down the major scale, B major, starting on fret 7. practice this is to take like you know rock songs or something that just has straight eighth note space lines you know there's just tons of them out there it's just songs like that are great to practice this and you just want to just drill those songs just up and down with the, the thumb stroke so you want to be able to interchangeably go from right so those are a great way to really break in the thumb um, and once again, don't get too caught up in trying to make it sound good. You just want to get the control of the thumb down first because the hardest part is adding in those extra two fingers, especially when it's all in one string. Okay, now about thumb placement, a lot of people uh, I really see do this technique over the fretboard because it kind of gives a, your thumb kind of like a backboard, uh, a, a constant thing you're hitting to really feel and gain like a reference of where you're at when you're not looking at it. So what I really suggest is try this on the fretboard. 
you know, if, if the, the space between your strings and your body is really deep and you find your thumb getting kind of caught up, you can try this over the fingerboard, the very end of it. Another great way to do it. Or if you have larger soap bar style pickups or just pickups that have a, you know, a really wide flat surface area. Another great way to do it there. And that's going to uh, remain true with the plucks too. Uh, I usually do my plucks over the pickups because the space between the strings and the pickups is more shallow. It's a little easier to grab the strings. So experiment with that. Try it over here or down here, whatever feels comfortable. But for now, practice just doing downstroke, upstroke with the thumb very lightly. You may feel some uh, growing pains on your thumb on the upstroke. It, it's, uh, it's brutal on the thumb, as I said. So get used to that and don't worry about the plucks just yet. Master the thumb first because without the thumb, the plucks don't really make sense in this technique. And find songs that have easy bass lines, very eighth note based, uh, you know, rhythms that are very divisible by two. You can practice the upstroke and the downstroke and we'll see you in part two next time. Thank <laughs> you.